We have now come to, without a doubt, the most important topic for the IMAT, and that is biology. Now, in the IMAT, there are some topics that are optional and that you can skip them if you want, but biology is not one of them. And really, if you are planning to study medicine, you should not be skipping biology anyway. If you don't like biology, well, then you should really reconsider medicine, because this is really a good introduction to what studying medicine is like. Because like studying medicine, the way to get good at biology is really to put in a lot of time and a lot of effort. The actual concepts aren't that difficult to understand, but you need to put in a lot of time. Otherwise, there is no way that you are going to be prepared come test day. And a very important piece of advice is this. You have to start studying biology early. Maybe you don't have a background in biology and you find all this content intimidating and you don't think you'll be able to memorize it all. Don't worry, anyone can do it. It's not that difficult. It just requires a lot of time. But if you leave it to the last minute, then trust me, no one can do it. So you have to start early. Okay, having said that, let's actually explore how biology works in the IMAT. So as I mentioned, biology is by far the most important topic assessed in the IMAT because it is 18 questions. That means it's 27 marks. That is a huge chunk of the IMAT. You just cannot skip this section. Now, because biology is the largest section and the most important, the IMAT writers tend to make biology one of the more difficult sections. And by that, I mean not necessarily that the subject is more difficult than, say, chemistry or physics, but they ask more detailed types of questions in biology than they would for, say, physics or maths. They will definitely try to differentiate among the very strong students and the weaker students in this section. So unlike maybe a high school biology exam, where if you don't study that well, you can still get quite a few marks, in the IMAT, it doesn't work like that. They try to make a lot of trick questions here. So really, if you don't know the biology very thoroughly, you're not going to get many marks at all. So really, pay attention to detail. You have to learn everything very, very thoroughly when studying biology. So what is it exactly that you need to know for the biology section? Well, here is the official syllabus, and you can find this in the IMAT test specifications on the Cambridge website. It's very important that you only study the things on this list. I have seen people who study, for instance, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle, or ecology, and that kind of stuff, just because it's high school level biology. But really, if it's not on this list, then you're just wasting your time. So make sure that it's on this list before you study it. Okay, what level of depth do you need for all of these topics? Well, really, you only need slightly above high school level. Now, technically, this is going to be at high school level, but I find that they tend to ask theory that is slightly above it. And obviously, that depends on what kind of high school you went to and what country you're from, but generally speaking, at least. Now, maybe that doesn't sound too helpful, but in my videos on these topics, I will explain what level of detail you need to reach. So here I have an example of a question with the typical level of difficulty for an IMAT biology question. Which form of DNA would one be able to observe in a yeast cell? All right, now the question looks short, but there is a lot that you need to know to be able to answer this. First of all, you need to know that a yeast cell is a eukaryote, therefore it'll have organelles and a nucleus. Okay, then you need to know that a nucleus contains linear DNA. Then you also need to remember that since it's a eukaryote, it'll have mitochondria. And mitochondria actually have circular DNA. So this yeast cell will have both linear and circular DNA. And really, these types of questions are good at getting rid of people who haven't studied the biology well enough. Some people will just think, okay, a yeast cell, that's a microorganism, so it must be a prokaryote. Therefore, it doesn't have any organelles, so it only has circular DNA. Other people might think, aha, a yeast cell is a eukaryote, so therefore it has a nucleus and has linear DNA. And then they forget about the mitochondria. So these types of questions are typical of the IMAT. They love having these sort of tricky questions that will weed out people who don't know everything thoroughly. Now, in the coming videos, I'm actually going to go over what you should study, show you the tricks, and show you what they usually ask for in those topics. So if you study those videos, you will be very prepared for these types of tricky questions. Now, this course is not meant to be your first introduction to biology. I am assuming that you have studied at least some biology in high school. So if you haven't studied any biology before and this is your first time, well, then I recommend learning a bit first. You obviously don't need to be an expert and really you only need a basic level for these videos to be helpful. But if you don't even know what a cell or an organelle is, well, then learn that first because otherwise what I'm teaching you probably won't make sense. 
Now also, I will be covering most of the topics in the biology section, but if there is a topic that you do want me to cover that I haven't covered, well just send me an email and if enough people are interested I'll make a video on that as well. Okay, having said all that, how do you actually go about studying for biology? Well, there's a few things you should do. First of all, you should definitely use iMatBuddy when it comes to the content, because I will cover most of the topics and I'll show you the tricks that the iMat has, and what it is you should focus in on, and what is very important and what is not. Now, you shouldn't only rely on these videos and practice questions, though. You should use other textbooks as well. Because when it comes to studying biology, nothing beats studying down with a textbook and just learning content hour after hour. That is how you get good at absorbing all this information. And of course, there is plenty of other online resources that are very helpful when you get stuck on a certain topic. Now, when it comes to the actual studying, you have to dedicate most of your time to this section. It is a huge section, there is tons of stuff to learn and then tons of stuff to memorize as well. You actually have to be able to recall it come I'm at time. So you have to dedicate a lot of time to biology. And because biology takes so much time, you have to be efficient. So always check the syllabus. Never study a biology topic that is not on the syllabus. And you have to use Active Recall. And this is where Anki flashcards come in handy. Now there are alternatives to Anki, but Anki is the one that is the most popular. And really, it is not optional for biology. You have to use this resource if you want to do well on the IMAT. At least for 90% of the candidates taking the test, that is going to be true. So don't just take notes and then reread them and expect that to work. No, it won't stick in your head if you do that. You have to use some form of active recall. And of course, very important, you want to do practice questions. But specifically, you want to do IMAT style practice questions. Because as I've mentioned, the IMAT level of difficulty and the style of question is very different to your typical high school exam. Now, where can you find IMAT style questions? Well, on IMAT Buddy, there are going to be hundreds of biology questions that completely match the same format and level of difficulty as the IMAT. So that is a good place to start. You, of course, want to do past IMAT papers as well. However, when doing IMAT papers, you should do them in one sitting. Otherwise, you will waste these valuable resources. That is, you shouldn't just do the biology questions and then that's it. No, you want to actually save the IMAT papers for a day when you can do the whole test in one sitting because that is very good practice for the IMAT and gives you a good indication of how well you are going to score. Now, of course, the BMAT also has a biology section and you should definitely do these questions as well. But the BMAT biology section is, in my opinion, a bit easier than the IMAT biology section. So just because you do well for those questions, it doesn't necessarily mean you are prepared. Okay, and really that's pretty much all you need to know about the biology section. So we'll get started with the actual content in the next video.